What's up guys? In a previous video I did a motion sensor that could send me a text or an alert anywhere in the world right to my phone. Today we're going to adapt that code a little bit. Earlier this week we did a 3D printer filament video and I had an idea in that video. I could wirelessly monitor the humidity level inside my box of 3D printer filament to let me know when my desiccant was getting weak and when I needed to recharge it. Today we're going to take an ESP8266, add a temperature and humidity sensor, have it text and alert us and email us the level of humidity and temperature in the box and then go into deep sleep and run on battery so that it won't it won't use up much battery and it could last months and months and months it just wakes up once a day sends us a message and then goes back to sleep let's put it together as per the usual we need to go raid the bins here and get a few components we'll need a DHT 11 temperature and humidity sensor we'll need some jumper wires we need a bigger breadboard than this I think from the microcontroller bin we need an ESP8266, I think. This one would be really fun because this one has the battery built right into it. But I haven't played with this particular style yet. This is an ESP32. That's way more powerful than what we need. These will be perfect. These are the ESP8266 Node MCU board, Lowland board, ESP12E, if you do it in the Arduino IDE to program them. Lots of I.O. We're going to be drastically underutilizing this, but it'll be really easy to put this thing to sleep, into deep sleep, and not chew up our batteries. Really easy to hook pins to. This will work. One last thing from this bin. Let's grab some perf board. Let's make this a permanent project. We'll do some headers, then we can plug in here. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, I've gone ahead and assembled this just on the breadboard. I've got the DHT11. We're hooked up to ground. We're hooked up to three volts three. We're hooked up to D3. This is outlined in the code. As well, we've got a little jumper. The jumper goes from our D0 pin to our reset line. This has to be removed when we're programming it, but this line has to be in place for the ESP8266 to wake up from deep sleep. It uses this D0 to wake the chip up by toggling the reset. But if you leave that tied, well, programming it will be a bear. That's it. There's nothing to it. It's just a few wires, but we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move this over to a PCB. All right, gone ahead and taken the perf board and set our ESP8266 into it. Normally I would do female headers so I can remove this later, but I have quite a few of these boards and truthfully they're a little obsolete now with the ESP32. So I think, and I'm gonna keep this for a long time. So we'll do a little bit of a permanent install here. Go ahead and solder these up. What we end up with is this cool little rig. So we've got the ESP8266 just set into the perf board, soldered in. We have the three wires from our DHT11 going in, which is power, ground, and signal. And we have this additional jumper. What that's doing is jumpering from the D0 to the reset with this little jumper wire on the back side of the board. That way, what I can do is just remove this and then sever the connection when I want to program the board. If that stays tied, the board can't be programmed. But without it, the ESP8266 can't wake up from deep sleep. It's a big board. We could do a lot better on this. We could do a custom PCB. We could even do without the PCB entirely. But eh, for the purposes of this video, this will work good. Quickly, I better show you how this thing works. Powered up, I've set the code up to just send a message every 30 seconds now. And that's what we get on the screen. We get notification that the webhook has run. We get the humidity at 36 and temp at 23 on text message right to my phone. That's just email to text. And then we have the IFTTT, IFTTT notification that the applet has also run. And it works perfectly. I'm super happy with it. If we reset the micro, as soon as it boots up and gets on the Wi-Fi, it'll run again. With any luck, we should have one momentarily. And there we go. Applet run and we'll get another text message. Awesome. This will, we can set this up to run every day, go into deep sleep, save some battery. Let's go finish it up.
back in the workshop. These things turned out great. Not too bad. Uh, the PLA came out pretty good. A couple of little bit of marks in the grill. This box, again, is downloadable in the project uh, on GitHub. It's way bigger than what we need, but I did this on purpose. Rather than use a typical buck boost system and a LiPo battery, I decided to just use one of these cheap 18650 units. You can pick these up just about anywhere. I got this one at the YouTube space. And then we can just plug our USB into it. And that way it makes it nice and easy and there's battery protection built into these things. So if it runs too low, it'll protect itself and not kill the cell. Makes it easy for anyone to recreate this. Again, this is kind of, we could have done it way, way smaller. This is repeatable by anyone, super easy. So what we'll do, I think, is we'll take and just fasten our board to the side, and then we'll fasten our DHT11 to the far side, and then just lay our battery in the middle. That way we can just pop it out whenever we want to charge it. It's gonna last a long time. Not much to this stage of the process. We'll go ahead and we'll just put some right on the pins here and a little dollop in the middle. And that should stick just beauty. Just like that. We'll let that set up. That way we can still access our jumper here to program it. Remember, we've got to pull this jumper that's the, the wake up that shorts our reset line and allows us to uh, program it if we remove that. For the far side, we'll just add a little bit of glue to our DHT11. And let's just set it right about here. We're going to be close enough to the vent holes. Not a lot of air movement inside this box, but it should be at the same humidity level as the rest of my filament box. Now we just take, plug our battery in, and set it in the box. Nothing to it. We could glue that down or fasten it in if we desire, but it's absolutely fine. This thing's not getting bashed around or anything. It's just going inside a Rubbermaid tote. So this will enclose it, keep things from shorting, and just work perfect. That is just beautiful. With any luck, that should be sending us some text messages. Absolutely great. The grates allow the air to circulate, no problem. And sure enough, we're getting text messages. Perfect! Absolutely wonderful! Pretty happy with this. Again, maybe next time I'll make the enclosure a little bit smaller and do an onboard battery, but we can go ahead and set this into my filament box and now every day I'll get an alert on my phone of the temperature and humidity in the box. Okay, back to the filament box. You guys saw this in a previous video. This is where my little dehumidifier lives and all my 3D printer filament lives, or well, a good portion of it, and into the box goes our nifty little humidity monitor now. Now, I'm just gonna get an alert every day on my phone. Let me know whether I need to get this out and recharge it. Let me know whether I'm gonna get some water in my filament. You can adapt this code to whatever project you want. It'll work for, say, a smoke detector or whatever. You could have it wake up if smoke is detected using the interrupter. Tons of other options out there. Let's take a quick look at the code and call it a day. Okay, setting up the code is super easy for this. I've set you up an entire GitHub with a pretty extensive readme here that tells you how to get the things that you need. Just download it all, even has the project box in it. All kinds of good stuff. Into the code to program to the ESP8266. It's not too hard. I've done extensive commenting in here, links to other tutorials so you can understand how I figured this out and how things work. You know, all you need to do is put your SSID for your network, that's your Wi-Fi network name, and your password in here. Yes, I hard-coded it just to annoy the internets out there. Up after that, there's some code here for the DHT. We're gonna do, we set some floats that we're gonna use later. The DHT sensor, just set it up for whatever one you're using. Next up, I just have some information on the DHT sensor. It's right out of the examples. There's nothing groundbreaking here. We start our serial. We do a simple little print lines, handy for debugging. We do a delay of two seconds. That gives the time for the DHT sensor to pick up a good reading. Then we do the serial print lines so we can do more debugging. This is where you have to put in some information. So maker.ifttt.com, well, this is all in the readme. This is the same as my motion sensor tutorial, which is handy. I go through all of how to set up your IFTTT, but we're naming it uh, humidity, so that's what you're gonna set your, your trigger to in IFTTT. Again, linked in the GitHub. 
your API key. This is your maker key. Again, how to get it linked in the GitHub. We just close the connection. We build the URL with the string. This is a bunch of gobbledygook to most people, but basically this is where we assemble the string that we're sending to IFTT, IFTTT. And we do serial prints just for debugging. This is where you do your deep sleep. This is really important. We wanna set this, if we wanna wake up once a day, we'd set it to 86400E6. So put that in here. Right now I have it set to approximately a little over an hour or a little less than an hour. Again, I was working through some debugging on this. That's it, nothing happens in the loop because when we wake up from deep sleep, we only run the setup functions. So the void loop is empty. Nothing to it, you just fill in those spots, program it up, and you can have yourself a wireless temp and humidity sensor that wakes up as often as you want, runs on batteries, goes back into deep sleep, sends a notification to your phone, sends you an email, whatever you want on IFTTT. You can do all kinds of things, post a Twitter message, you name it. If you like these videos, consider hitting a thumbs up below. If you're new here, subscribe. New videos every week. I'll see you guys next video. Cheers.